Hi and welcome to a new video. Do you want an extra cloud storage option for your files and data? Then Microsoft OneDrive is a good option to have universal and dynamic access on any device. In this video, I'll show you how to install, set up and use OneDrive on your Mac. Let's go. I use OneDrive for a year now on my Mac and I just love it. OneDrive is a file hosting service launched by Microsoft in 2014. This cloud storage allows you to access your files between different devices anytime and anywhere, back them up, and easily share them with your friends and family. OneDrive offers several plans you can choose from for a reasonable price. You can check them out on their website by clicking on the tab Plans and Pricing. To test OneDrive, you can also sign up for free and get 5 gigabit cloud storage. But if you need more storage to upload all your data, it is recommended to subscribe to a plan with more storage. An alternative is the Microsoft 365 offer. There are two plans. Microsoft 365 Personal gives you one terabyte of cloud storage along with the most important Office programs like Word, PowerPoint, and Excel for about $70 a year. On the other hand, Microsoft 365 Family offers 6 terabytes of storage and 6 Microsoft Office licenses that can be shared by up to 6 people for about $100 a year. I personally use the Family subscription. By finding just one friend, you will already save money. Click on the tag in the top right to purchase Microsoft 365 for less money than on the original website. After purchasing your plan on the website, you'll receive the activation key via email. To activate your license, you first need to set up a free account. So sign up if you don't have an account already or sign in if you have an existing one. If you purchased your subscription externally, you need to activate your plan with your redemption code. Go to Settings and in the Your Additional Storage section, click on redeem OneDrive code and enter your activation key. Now on OneDrive's dashboard, you can navigate to the sidebar menu and click on My Files which contains all your stored data. Inside the Recent menu, you can find all the files you have recently opened or updated. You can also select Photos, Shared Files and the Recycle Bin. Note that the files you have deleted remain in the recycle bin for 30 days, giving you time to retrieve any files you might have accidentally deleted. Right below, you can see how much storage you used. I used about 1 megabyte out of the 5 gigabyte of free storage that I have. To create a folder, click on New at the top. It's also possible to create files online using the MS Office applications which is useful if you don't want to download the programs or you want to quickly edit some files. Let's open a new word. As you can see, you have all the features like the downloaded version. Ok, back to OneDrive. With the Upload button, you can upload single files or complete folders to the cloud from your local storage. You can sort your files by your preference, either by their name, their file size or their order. To customize how your files are displayed, you can change the View options. I recommend viewing your files as a list. Right-clicking on a file or folder opens more options like renaming, copying, moving, deleting, downloading or sharing. When you click on Share, you generate a link that you can send to just one or multiple email accounts. If you want, you can also change the permissions. Allow others to edit files and even set an expiration date or password for the link. For the last two features, a subscription of Microsoft 365 is needed. For multiple recipients, probably the easiest way is to simply copy the link and send it to them, for example on WhatsApp. To customize permissions afterwards or you just want to see who has access, you can select the file and click Info at the top right. You should know that the person who gets the link doesn't need to have a OneDrive account to access the shared files. For ease of use and offline access, it is better to install OneDrive on your Mac. You have two options. The first option is to get it from the OneDrive website by clicking on the Get the OneDrive Apps. 
Another method is to download it from the App Store. Just search for OneDrive and you should find it. It's possible you get asked to sign into your Apple ID first before you can download the app. Once you install the app, open it and sign into your account. If you like, you can change the location where OneDrive stores its data. Now, OneDrive is set up and ready to use. Under the location OneDrive on your Mac, you can find the same files you have stored on your cloud. Let me show you some settings I recommend you to change in the beginning. If you click on the OneDrive icon in the menu bar, you will see the sync status of your files. Clicking on the cloud icon at the top is the easiest way to access the OneDrive app. As you can see, my files are all synced up. Here, you can navigate to Settings to personalize OneDrive's configurations. You can edit the general settings under the tab Preferences and I recommend that you leave the first three options checked and the last two options unchecked. Right below is the Files on Demand setting. With this, you can automatically download the files you use and free up disk space taken by those you don't use. Note that Files on Demand requires Mac OS 10.14 or newer. To know more about this, check out the link in the tag. The cool thing about OneDrive is that you have access and can work with terabytes of data and you don't have to purchase an expensive Mac with one terabyte of storage. Okay, now back in the Finder. Right next to your files, you will see some icons which all have their own meaning. I'll go through the most important ones, but if you don't know the meaning of an icon, click on the tag in the top right corner to get help. First, the online only icon. This is the cloud with the arrow down symbol. This means that your file is stored on the cloud and not locally on your Mac. This makes sense if you want to save disk space, but know that you will need an internet connection to access the file. While opening the file, it will automatically start downloading it from the server to your computer. After you download it, the icon disappears. For files that you often work with, it is recommended to choose Always Keep on this device. This stores your files locally, which is indicated by the gray check icon. If you need more local space, you have the option to free up space as well. Right-click on the file or folder you want to be out stored and then click this option. Note that the function free up space does not delete any file. If you delete a file accidentally, you'll not find it in your recycle bin on your Mac. Then please check the recycle bin on OneDrive Online like I showed you before. Okay, just one last icon, the one with the two persons. This one indicates all the files which you are currently sharing with other persons. Of course, the files stored on OneDrive have the same features on your Mac like all of the other files. Just like your local files, right-clicking on a file opens other functions like renaming, duplicating, or deleting. If you want to learn how to install and use Microsoft Office 365 with all the Office products like Word and Excel on a Mac, check out the tag Video Tag in the top right. And that's it. If I could help you, feel free to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions. See you next time. Bye!